So are you a first time buyer and thinking about getting into the London property market? Then make sure to check out this video because I'm going to give you 10 great tips on things you're going to need to know before you complete that transaction. Hi everyone, Ugo Renze here with Onyx Property Team and Keller Williams. Thank you for checking out my YouTube videos. I put out my channel to post uh, videos about the London property market and living in this incredible city. I've been living in London for over 11 years. I'm an expat myself and I have bought and sold not just in London but in the US and I love working with my buyers whether they are seasoned investors, foreign nationals or first time buyers. In this video, we're dedicating it to our first time buyers and giving them some great tips that they should consider if they are looking to buy into the property market. If this is your first time on my channel, please make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell because I put out weekly videos about everything you're going to need to know about the property market here in London. So tip number one is figure out why you want to buy a property now and what type of property you might be looking for. A lot of people now might be looking and realizing that they don't no longer need to live in central London given that we are still in the middle of the pandemic and might be able to afford uh, different parts of uh, you know areas that are outside of London and just feeling like they want to get on the property ladder. So one of the things about you know considering why you want to buy now is maybe now is the right time. Interest rates are still very low. Um, you might be able to get the right financing and you might be able to afford more if perhaps you no longer want to live say in central London. And that leads me to tip number two is to make sure you speak with a mortgage advisor and really understand the finances associated with buying a property such that you can have a real clear idea of budget. Now, for some first time buyers, it might end up meaning that, you know, what you think you might be able to afford um, you might not be able to get the kind of budget you're looking for or for some people they actually might be pleasantly surprised that they can get more financing than they realize. Many lenders are still willing to do you know 10% down and so you might be able to take advantage of that especially as I've mentioned since interest rates are low. So step number two is understanding what that budget is and perhaps then if it might not get you as much as you want maybe you're going to need to save a bit more and maybe that might shift your time frame and push it out a bit. Once you do know what that budget is, then the next thing, tip number three, is definitely going to be where, where do you want to live and what does that place need to have? For example, if you are thinking about buying in London, are you looking for a place that might be near um, a park or green space? Do you may you know might be insisting on that it actually have private uh, green space, whether that's in the form of a balcony or terrace or what have you? Um, as far as neighborhoods, is amenities important to you being able to walk within five or ten minutes? to a tube station? Uh, is culture really important? Um, is the cost of commuting going to be an issue, right? So some people trade off, okay, they're going to move further out and then not realize when they factor in, you know, the monthly cost of a train ticket and commuting in, maybe it negates some of that uh, cost savings on the property. So just really figuring out the areas you want to consider uh, to live. Um, London has a ton of incredible different neighborhoods. Are you perhaps somebody that wants an area that's more leafy and green? Perhaps uh, you might have a small family, so being in an area with lots of pocket parks or playgrounds for children or access to great schools might be a consideration. Or perhaps you want something that's going to still allow you a fun and entertaining lifestyle. We recently uh, were working with first time buyers in South London and for them they really wanted a home where they could see themselves raising their family or starting their family in the next five to ten years. So really it was almost more house than they needed right now but knowing that this house was going to have to fit in and they wanted in a diverse neighborhood because they're a mixed race couple. So it's again really understanding what different neighborhoods might be able to offer. Tip number four is to be realistic. What, this is one of the things when I'm working with buyers that you know I really feel my job is to hear their needs, to help them understand, but also to make to help them be realistic. Because in London, um, it's one of those places that even if you have a million pound, two million pound, five million pound budget, it's just, you know, you'd be surprised at the things you might have to trade off, right? So if you want a property that's completely in great shape, modernized, completely great looking, 
then perhaps you might give up on or trade off on size, right? And it might not be the thousand square feet you're looking for. Or you might have to give up, I know a lot of people don't like lower ground properties, but some, sometimes those low grounds are the best values in the market and get you more space, get you more great locations. So it's really understanding, and I really try to help my clients get down to three or four must-haves. Anything else, try to keep an open mind on. So if for you having, say, um, bicycle storage is really important, then you know what? Don't look at a property that doesn't have bicycle storage. But if you've created those three or fours and then you have to trade off on some of the, the likes, then you just have to be prepared to do that because otherwise, you might never find a property if you just have this unrealistic list as to all the things it's going to have, even though we all have a ceiling as far as a budget that we can't really exceed. Once you've kind of figured out all the things, you've got your budget, you kind of know what you're liking, then you have to organize your viewings. And that means, you know, searching online, some of the popular portals are Zoopla and Rightmove and Booming and On The Market. So there's lots of portals where you can search. But once you do find a property, you're now going to have to reach out to those agents that have the stock and organize viewing days. Um, a lot of people obviously like to view on Saturdays because they're not working, but a lot of agents, ironically, don't always have full you know viewing dates so you really just need to kind of budget your time try to be efficient about it maybe try to look in certain neighborhoods and on given days um, and typically just try to be as organized as you as possible and double check with those agents because sometimes when you do register with them they start inundating with you a lot of stuff that doesn't suit your criteria so it's important to be really clear with them as to making sure they're only showing you the things that um, are you know, really inside your, your criteria. When you do look to find a property or perhaps you're doing the viewings, then you want to definitely ask some key questions. So that's tip number six or some of the things you might want to be asking. And so they might include, is the property a leasehold, a freehold or a share of freehold? Uh, what are the service charges? Sometimes, you know, how long has the property been on the market? If it's been on for a while, have they gotten any offers? Um, then you might also want to know, are there any major improvements that are planned? If you're looking at a flat that's got other properties and it's older building, you know, what is the schedule of works that are happening? Uh, are those being funded in what we call um, a sinking fund? Or are they retaining any of the service charges for that? Because what you don't want is to perhaps buy a property and then you're going to get hit with not just the ongoing service charges, but now this big plan for capital improvements like changing the boiler system or changing the carpet or repainting the exterior or something if they haven't been funding it for years in advance. Now, if you finally find the property that you like, that leads me to tip number seven when you're submitting an offer. Make sure when you submit your offer, you put it in writing and also try to share with them why you know you makes you a great buyer of this property. Maybe you've been looking for a while. Maybe you've got a young family and you know that that third bedroom is gonna be a really great place to, to, to raise your child and spend time. Um, and just really maybe help the vendor get a slight picture of who you might be or who you are as a family or as an investor or as a buyer and why this property really suits and if you're submitting an offer that's perhaps below asking price make sure you've done your homework perhaps you can show them comparables or refer to comparables as to why you think your offer is fair to them given the other properties that are on the market so you're really just helping them understand that you're not you know insulting them but that you have really thought this through and why you think that your offer is a very a fair offer if you've got all your mortgage and principal and everything ready you're demonstrating that you're eager you're ready to go you've done your homework and that you're as eager as they are to get this property completed and transacted as quickly as possible sometimes for first-time buyers agents don't like to work with first-time buyers because it is your first time you might be more nervous and skittish and asking more questions and more you know capable of you know ready to pull out because you don't understand something you don't understand some of those risks and what goes along the journey um, and so you just need to make sure you've educated yourself and when you you know are hiring that solicitor that's super important as well 
And that actually leads me to point number eight, which is to hire a great solicitor. Make sure it's somebody that you've been referred to that's worked with them in the past. If you're searching online, you might find somebody, don't choose the solicitor just because they're the cheapest one out there. There are a lot of firms that are just quite what we call kind of conveyance factories. You're not gonna get treated by as a person. You're just kind of a transaction. Then you might not be able to get your solicitor on the phone, get great updates, which are gonna be so important during that conveyance process. So I highly recommend you work with a solicitor that's been referred to you, check them out, and you know kind of that you're gonna get that level of extra time and attention that you might need, especially since you are a first time buyer. Then tip number nine is I recommend that you always get a survey. Um, even if it's a new build, you can get a very basic uh, building uh, survey just to understand and make sure that everything is working the way it's supposed to be working. If it's an older property, you're gonna want a more comprehensive survey. Um, and again, we can, you know, that's one of the things we do when we're working with our buyers is we recommend we've got people that we know are gonna get, do, do good work. To raise any issues we might want to consider, I'm working with a, an American couple right now and that survey has raised some things that we are now going back and raising as a point to negotiate because we feel like the particularly the roof hasn't been perhaps as uh, property sealed as we might have wanted so we want to make sure all of those things are being addressed and so again you can put it back to the seller to say hey look we want these things fixed we're not using as a price reduction but we just want to make sure that we're getting a property that's solid and we're not going to be burdened with all this extra unexpected works and costs. Um, one of the things now some of the surveys are recommended if you do an electrical inspection as, as well. Just again, you don't have to do it, but you want to make sure that everything is to code, everything is proper, and you don't have any nasty surprises in the weeks or months to come after you brought the property. And finally, my 10th tip is to make sure that you are checking in on the conveyance process the entire step of the way. You want to be regularly getting updated by the sales agent um, if you're not working with a buying agent like myself to make sure you fully understand where things are sitting. Uh, you might have to nudge them, push them, especially if they've got too many other deals or what they're working on. You want to merely make sure that everybody's clear on where things are have the has the management pack been sent out has the draft contracts been sent out have the inquiries gone out have the searches a lot will sit with your solicitor so you want to make sure your solicitor can fully be keeping you abreast as to where things stand if they've requested something of the seller solicitor and they haven't heard back that should only be a couple of days it shouldn't go weeks and you want to make sure then you're putting pressure on the sales agent